first. I want to get in Genesis, but we need to go to the New Testament first. Go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7. We will be going into Genesis 6 here in a minute. God bless you. If you're visiting with us here today, we thank God for you uh, coming today. No accident or coincidence that you're here today. We believe it's the providence of God. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to begin at verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Rescue. Rescue. Now, in, Gen in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, and you don't have to stand. We're going to go right into it this morning. You can really summarize Genesis chapter 6 through 9 in the one verse of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. In, in Genesis chapter 6 through 9, we have, if you will, the story in its entirety of Noah. And this one verse in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, really summarizes those, uh, those chapters. I'll read it. It says, by faith. Somebody say faith. faith. I can't hear you. Say faith. faith. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he, com he, he condemned the world and became heir, the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. Somebody say, by faith. By faith. Noah did this by faith. Now, we've all heard the story of Noah. Some of us need, some of us probably went to go see the, the movie Noah. If you did, erase it out of your memory because it's Amen. incorrect. Amen. Amen. Totally wrong. Hollywood just wanted to make some extra money, and they did off some of us. Not me. I didn't go see it. They meant praise the Lord. But, 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 but rescue. And one thing I want us to know this morning as we launch uh, this series off is whether we know it or not, all of us need rescuing. Whether you admit it or not, all of us need rescuing. What do you mean, Pastor? What do we need to be rescued from? Well, number one, you need to be rescued from yourself. <laughs> the Bible tells us uh, that in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. And if there was not, if it was not for God, we would have destroyed ourselves a long time ago. If it was not for the intervention of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Another thing we need rescuing from uh, is the enemy. Uh, the Bible tells us, remember, that the enemy goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he what? May devour. All right? So, so he, he wants to disrupt your life. His objective, remember, is to steal. His objective is to kill. And his objective is to, to destroy. But Jesus says, but I have come so that they may have life and have it more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. All right? So we need rescuing from ourselves. We need rescuing from the enemy. And this is what we also need rescuing from is the wrath of God. We need rescuing from the wrath of God. How many of you know that as awesome as God is, as loving as God is, that God has to judge sin? Amen. God is an awesome God, and he loves us, and he desires that no man or woman perishes and spends eternity separated from him. He wants all of us to come to the knowledge of who his son Jesus Christ is and to spend eternity with him. Is there anybody here that don't want to spend eternity with God? Amen. We want to spend eternity with God. Amen. So, so, so we find that we have to be rescued from ourselves. We have to be rescued from the hand of the enemy. And we have to be rescued from the wrath of God. God would not be a just God if he did not judge sin. All right, he would not be just if he did not judge sin. He's a just God. Now, in, in the story of Noah, we see Noah and his family being rescued from the wrath of God. Being rescued from the wrath of God. What does it mean to be rescued? That word means it's, it's an act of saving or being saved from danger or distress. That's what rescue means. We're, we're close to a beach, and many people, this beach season, as we enter into some of the hottest days of the month, people are going to go down to the beach, and what you're going to see is a lifeguard who sits high but looks low. And what that lifeguard's to total uh, responsibility is, is to search out people who are struggling by means of putting themselves in a situation 
or ignoring the signs that say, hey, don't go past this. You know, people will go past, they put, I don't know why they put the signs up, people go past them anyway. Yeah. There are going to be uh, lifeguards who look for people who do that. There are going to be lifeguards who look for people who get caught up unexpectedly by rip currents. Uh, there are going to be lifeguards who are looking for uh, uh, jellyfish things and, and sharks and all these type things. The lifeguard has our best interests, and they're always on go to rescue. All right? They want to pull us out of situations that can ultimately take our lives. How many of you know that God is the great rescuer? Amen. Hey, man, he, he's rescued us from ourselves. Amen. He's rescued us from uh, harming ourselves and either from others harming us. Somebody needs to know today that you have been rescued if you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Somebody say, if you can say it, I've been rescued. I've been Amen. I've been rescued. Man, when you're rescued, you begin to find yourself in a place where you can become more closely aligned with the will of God for your life because you don't even worry about death itself because you know that God has you. There's a comfort that comes as a result of receiving the rescue efforts that God has put forth. Does anybody hear me today? Amen. Now watch this now. Let's look at this because I want you to understand the conditions of Noah's day. And for us to understand that, I first want to mention a couple of scriptures that Jesus gave us in the New Testament. You can write them down. But Jesus, he gave us a picture of how bad it was in the day of Noah. Amen. And it was so bad that, man, people needed to be rescued, whether they knew it or not. Jesus says in the book of Luke chapter 17, Verse 26 and 27, he says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Jesus is saying, you know what? Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. I'm going to share some things with you, and as I'm sharing them with you, of what takes place in the days of Noah, it's going to be eerie similar to what's going on in our day today. It's going to be very similar. You're going to be like, wait a minute, this sounds like what's going on today, Pastor, and it is going on today. Jesus also said in the book of Matthew 24, just write it down, 36 through 39, he says, as he's talking about his return, he says, but of that day and hour... No man knows, not even the angels, but my father only. Let me just say this for a minute. Nobody knows when Jesus is coming back except the father, the father. Amen. Don't read the books and a and, uh, hundred ways you know that Jesus is coming back, all that stuff. No, here it is. Let me make it simple for you. Just be ready when he comes back. Amen. Somebody say, be ready. be ready. Just be ready when he comes back. And then you... You know, we, we, we just have to be ready. He goes on in verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of man, the son of man be. <clears throat> For as in the days before the flood, they were, watch this, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them away. So also will the coming of the son of man be. So these people were living in such a way that they totally ignored the message that God had given Noah to give to them. And they say, you know what? We're just going to eat, we're going to drink, and we're going to be merry. We're going to do our own thing. Noah, I hear you preaching the good news, and Noah really only had one message. It's going to rain. That's all he said. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. And nobody knew what rain was because they never experienced rain in that day. But they went on doing what they did day by day, ignoring the message of God. And here's the sad commentary, is that they did not know they were in trouble until the flood came. Somebody say, that's too late. Amen. Amen. Look, if you're being rescued, you got to grab the life preserver while it's in front of you right now. Amen. There's a time that's coming where the life preserver will not be available for us to grab onto to get to the place where God wants us to go. We got to get to a place in life where we recognize, you know what, man, I don't care what nobody else is doing. I'm not doing it. 
Do I have some saints in here who are not compromising saints? Secret service saints, amen? We, we in the church today, amen, and I know everybody, we can get along in the church. Everybody's a Christian when you come to church. Everybody praises the Lord when you come to church. Everybody, we all on the same page, but God is concerned. What do you do about yourself when you step outside the boat? How are you acting in your family? On your job? Are we still representing him as we were when we were in church, clapping our hands and raising our hands to the that's what God is interested in. Now watch this now because the, 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 the five major things, and, and I'm getting to the point where I'm going to give you five lessons we can learn from Noah, Noah but here's the environment. And there are five major things that were going on in um, Noah's day. Go to Genesis 6. Here we go as we begin to take off. Amen. There were five major things. Number one, there was an explosive population. There was an explosive population. Watch this now. The Bible says, now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. Y'all see that? Amen? It was an explosion. Millions of people were populating the earth. Somebody say, what's wrong with that? Well, we have to begin to read verse 2 to find out what's really wrong to that, which brings me to the next two points. The other thing that was major is there was sexual perversion. Sexual perversion. And the third thing, watch this, there was demonic activity. So there are three things right there, right? There, there was an explosive population. The second thing is there was sexual perversion. And the third thing was there was demonic activity. Verse 2 tells us that. It says, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass when, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters and daughters were born to them, watch this now, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were beautiful, and took and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Y'all see that? All right. Somebody say, what's wrong with that? Well, if you keep reading, watch this now. Verse, verse 6 says, and the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. Isn't that something? That's sad commentary. The, 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 the verse 3 says, and, and, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of man came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. So watch this now. Many people believe that um, these are two trains of thoughts as it relates to what has happened. Number one, watch this now. Uh, people believe that the line of Cain, which was a, uh, a murderous line, and a godly line of people came together and had children and produced an offspring that was ungodly. All right? I don't ascribe to that. What I ascribe to is that this, the Bible mentions the sons of God, which we can, uh, uh, if you go to the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6, for example, it talked about the sons of God roam to and fro, and that's referring in that context to angels. Okay? All right? So what, wait a minute now. Do you mean, Pastor, that angels came down from heaven and had relations with women, and they produced an offspring that was ungodly? Well, angels are ministering spirits. So angels, in and of themselves, do not have the plumbing to uh, reproduce. All right? Can I say it like that? All right? So what has to happen is understanding that the, when, 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 the, when Satan and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven, they fell into the earth, right. and what spirits look for who are evil, especially, is a body to navigate in. Right. 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 All right? I'm talking about demonic possession. I'm talking about spirit who is looking for a place to reside. Right. A lot of the challenges and issues that people face is not because they need more medicine. It's something deeper going on. A spirit has taken residence in that body 
to cause the type behavior that is happening. All right, remember when Jesus, when he goes uh, to a place and there are two men who are demon-possessed, and the Bible says that they couldn't go any further because of these men who were demon-possessed. They were crazy. They were wild. They were, they were living in tombs, the Bible tells us. Well, when Jesus shows up on the scene, their language begins to change. That's right. What do you have to do with us, Jesus? Is it our time? Are you going to take us out before our time? And the Bible said that Jesus simply said, go. That's all he said was go. He didn't have to say, in the name, he didn't have to do all that. He just said, go. See, when you say, go to a demon, and the Jesus in you is speaking through you, then that demon has to go. My point is simply this, that when the demons came out of those men, they had to go into a vessel in order to, uh, to, to, to remain uh, active or alive. Remember, they went into swines, they went into pigs, and those pigs ended up what? Running off the cliff and drowning, all right? Spirits have to have a place to reside, and I believe this is what was happening in the days of Noah, is the evil spirits were coming in, they were getting into these foolish, crazy men, and they were impregnating people, and you had a rebellious generation. Y'all understand that? The, 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 the fourth thing is this, I'm just on the fourth thing. It is constant evil in the heart of man. There was constant evil in the heart of man. Now watch this now as we read verse 5. I want to slow down and read it because sometimes we read through stuff too fast. But notice what he's saying here in verse 5. He says, then the Lord saw the wickedness of man, saw the wickedness of man was what? Great. Was great in the earth. Watch this now. And that every intent, underscore that, every intent, every imagination, every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only Evil, how often? That's a bad generation. When you have everybody, watch this now, everybody, every imagination, every thought is only evil continually. The stuff that you hold back from saying, you just would have said. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have picked up the phone to talk. Nope, you just would have told the person right to their face. What, the, what you needed to tell them. It was, it was murder going on at, 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 at bay. There, there was backbiting. There was adultery. It was, it was a cesspool, and God could not stand it anymore. It was widespread corruption. In fact, verse 11 says, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Do y'all got a picture of what this is like? It was filled with violence. How, how, does this sound comparable to what we're going through right now? It was filled with violence. So what do you do? What do you do when you're in a world that's filled with all this stuff uh, and, and, and you have a heart for God? What do you do? You do what Noah did. Noah, the Bible said, faith. Somebody say faith. faith. See, you, you can't get caught up in what other people are doing. You, you got you to gotta put your hand to the plow and run the race that God called you to run. Amen. Why? When Jesus comes back, the Bible says he wants us to occupy until he comes. I can't occupy if I'm worried about what somebody else is doing. I'm going to put my hand to the plow, and if he's called you to be a garbage man, you be the best garbage man you can be. Whatever he's called you to do, you do it because all your work is to the glory of God. Amen. And you do it until Jesus comes back. Now watch this now. These people, um, they, they had a life preserver thrown out to them in the form of Noah. And here we go, five lessons we can all get from Noah. Now, the word Noah, it simply means rest. When you think about the word Noah, Noah's, uh, Noah's uh, name means rest. You can go back in Genesis chapter 5, I, began, I, I believe in around what, verse 28, and you can read about his father Lamech. And what he said about Noah, he knew that Noah was someone who was special, someone who was anointed to be born in the earth for such a time of what he was to be born for. Amen. Five lessons we can learn from Noah. How many of us would agree that we're in a hellish world, but God still has a remnant who's on fire for him? Amen. Do I have a witness in here? Anybody on here on fire for Jesus? Regardless of what the news says. Regardless of what's going on in your neighborhood, or even in your own family, you still love Jesus. I mean, that stuff shouldn't change your attitude in terms of how much you love Jesus. Amen? When you're sold out to Jesus, it don't matter what's going on. You begin to be a representative for him. You begin to let your light shine. 
Amen? Five lessons. The first lesson we can learn from Noah is Noah found grace in the eyes of God. I like to say it like this. If you want to say it like this, say Noah walked with God. Somebody say that with me. Noah. I can't hear you. Noah. Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. Watch this now. Noah is the only man that God is speaking to in the whole world. Why? Because he walked with God. God knew him and he knew God. That's what that means. He walked with God. The Bible says a few verses earlier about Enoch. He walked with God and he was no more. Man, what is it? What kind of relationship is that that you're walking with God? He was the only one in the whole world that God was talking to. Verses 8 through 10 says, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Law of first mention of the word grace. The first time you find the word mentioned in the Bible, grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Write this down. Your proximity to God matters. Your proximity to God matters. Don't watch this now. Don't be a, um, a, a, a Pluto saint. Amen. What, what does that mean? Amen. Uh, in, in, our, in our solar system, Pluto is the planet that's farthest away in our solar system from the sun. It's cold on Pluto. Don't be, look at your neighbor and say, don't be a Pluto saint. Please don't be a Pluto saint. Amen. It, it, they, they're cold. They don't even know the sun exists. Amen. Somebody say, I need to be a Mercury saint. Mercury saint. It gets 801 degrees on, on, on the surface of Mercury. 801 degrees is why? Because it's closest to the S-U-N. But I'm not talking about the S-U-N. I'm talking about being close to the S-O-N. And then you can walk with him, and when you walk with him, he'll begin to speak to you. Amen. Amen. The reason many of us, watch this now, it's a shame to live your whole life as a believer and to never hear from God. Yes. Isn't that a shame? Amen. You wait a minute, he's the good, the great, and the chief shepherd, and you're a sheep, and you never heard the voice of your shepherd? Well, maybe that explains why things are the way they are. We have, to, we have to walk with him. We have to, the Bible says, uh, 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 submit, submit your life uh, to, to God. Resist the devil, and he shall flee. Many of us are hanging out with the devil. And we begin to wonder, which voice are we hearing? A double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. We got to begin to hear the voice of God. But that deals with, watch this, your proximity to him. The closer you are to him, as Noah was, you begin to get brought in on what God is doing. Man, do you want to know what God is doing in your life? Take some time and talk to him. Amen. Turn off the TV. Amen. Don't, don't call in sick and say, I'm going to stay at home and watch TV. No, if you're going to call in sick, now you better not call in sick unless you're sick. But, but if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. <laughs> Amen. But, 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 but use your time wisely when you can begin to grow closer and closer to God. Amen. That's what Noah did. The Bible said he walked with God. He walked with God. He walked with God. He was a, a, a mercury believer. Amen. He was close. To, to God. Psalms 84, 11, write it down. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God will not withhold, withhold anything from you when you begin to walk uprightly. Noah, watch this now. He, he, was, he, was, he was favored of God. God favored him. He says, because you're walking to me with, with me, Noah, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm about to destroy the world. But you know what? Because you walk with me, Noah, because you love me and you show me your love, I'm not only going to save you, but I'm going to save you and your family. And I'm going to save the animals, too, Noah. All these other hellions talking about, they're talking about you. And I know it's been 120. Can you imagine 120 years to build an ark? I, I know it probably about year 10, he was like, man, I don't see no rain. What is, what is God talking about here? What is going on? The, the reason why it was such an uncommon instruction is because there was no water nowhere near the place. A hundred miles away was probably the closest body of water. And on top of that, it never rained. What is rain? That's what, that was the question. What are you talking about? But he was so close to God that he knew, here it is, 
that God would not lead him astray. He would not lead him astray. He would not lead him astray, which leads me to the second point, which is this. After being divinely warned by God, watch this. Noah obeyed God and stepped out by faith. After being, watch this, divinely warned by God, he stepped out by faith. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 11. It says, by faith, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Wait a minute. You're warning me, God, of something I haven't seen? How many of you know that God is a protector? Anybody ever experienced the, the, the grace of God in your life where he told you not to go there and you found out a, a, few, a few weeks later why you didn't need to go there? Please don't call that luck. That ain't luck. That's the Holy Spirit working through you. Don't discredit God by saying, oh, I got, I got lucky. No, you didn't get lucky. Not if you're a Christian, you don't believe in no luck. Amen. Horseshoes and all that stuff. Amen. Amen. We, we believe that the providence of God. The, 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 the Holy Spirit comes in and he intercedes and he does what he needs to do in the earth for our glory. But he's divinely warned, watch this, he's divinely warned and he, he, he obeys God and he steps out by faith. Your faith, watch this, is no good until you get a word from God. Your faith is no good until you get a word from God. If you step out on a word that somebody else has given you and they can't find it in scripture, you didn't just step off into a cliff somewhere. Right. Amen. You better make sure that what, what, what God has spoken to you aligns with his word because then you can step out in faith. Noah heard a word from God. As crazy as it sounded, he was going to be obedient to his God regardless of how other people were living. These people, whether they knew it or not, they were on their way to total separation forever. And Noah stayed the course. Somebody say he stayed the course. Stayed the course. Watch this now. Verse 12 says, so God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted their way on earth. And watch this. Verse 13. Here it is. And God said to Noah. Who did he talk to? Noah. Who did he talk to? Noah. God said to Noah. He wasn't talking to anybody else. He didn't talk to his wife. He didn't talk to his children. He says, I'm working through you, Noah. I'm talking through you. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy, I, I will destroy them with the earth. Here it is. Here's the instruction. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. And then God begins to give him detail by detail of how he wants him to construct this ark. It's amazing. It's amazing when you think about back in those days, Noah, given the task to build an ark, built it successfully. Amen. He chopped down every gopher tree that was around because he needed all that wood for 120 years. People ridiculing him. He's building the ark by day and he's preaching by night that it's going to rain. And people are saying, this man is lost. It's mine. Y'all see this man? They begin to ridicule him. They begin to talk about him. They begin to say all, you know how people do. Amen. They begin to say all types of things about you. But man, one day, as he completed that ark, as he's standing there, feel some stuff from heaven. See, God irrigated the earth from the ground. That's how he irrigated the earth. But, but this time, he, he said, you know what? This, this people's wickedness has come up before me, and, and, and you begin to feel drops of rain on your head. Can you imagine that? And the people standing on the outside, they began to say, wait a minute. And everything this man told us, man, this, this was, was true. Let's get in the boat. Well, no, it's too late to get in the boat now because the Bible tells us that God closed the door. And see, people, like I always say, when God closed the door, it's too late. You can't, you can't, you, know, you can't open back the open door. I need a, you ain't gonna open the door when God has closed the door. That door is sealed. Somebody say sealed. sealed. It's sealed and it's, it's 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 over. Verse twenty two says, "Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him to do." Noah did everything God commanded him to do. Here, here's something that'll help you out in your life. Stop arguing with God. Stop telling God, "I ain't know how," and all that stuff. God says, "Can you just do it?" Go to, um, here we go. Let me, let me give you some background here. Because I want you to get this. I want you to understand that when you get a word from God, you need to step out by faith. Faith is not hoping, wishing uh, that it's going to work out. No, faith is no. God has said it. I'm walking out. God said there's no bridge there. 
But I want you to begin to take a step, and as you're taking steps, I'm going to unfold the things that need to happen in your life. And we, many of us, are still stuck here where we won't even step out. And God says, I can't manifest the next thing in your life until you step out. Amen. We're afraid to fail, and God will never fail you if you believe him in Jesus' name. Amen. Go to Matthew 7, 24 quickly. Let me show you this. Amen. God will never fail you. Somebody say, God will never fail you. God will never, God will never fail you. Watch this now. Noah understood God's voice, and therefore he was obedient to God, and he stepped out by faith. This is the words of Jesus. He says, watch this. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, watch this, heareth these sayings of mine, and what? I can't hear you. So it's one thing to hear, but it's another thing what? It's another thing to do it. All right? Uh, faith without works is what? Man, you can have all the faith in the world. But if you're not willing to step out on that faith, then the Bible says without faith, it is what? It's impossible to please God. Do you think you're pleasing God by hanging on to the rail when he's asked you to let go and to step out? I don't know what your situation is or your circumstance is, but at some point in your life, you've got to be tired of depending on other people. You've got to be tired of depending on yourself, and you've got to start trusting God. You've got to start stepping out by faith. Jesus says, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon what? Did y'all see that? Upon a rock. Upon a rock. Go ahead. Watch this. The next verse says, verse 25 says, and, 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 and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon what? A rock. It was founded upon a rock. What's your life founded upon? You begin to find out what your life is built on when you go through trials and, and tribulations. God, I don't want no trial. Wait a minute. You begin to find out just how connected you are to God when, when you lose your job. You begin to find out how connected you are to, uh, to God when your children begin to act up. Amen. You begin to find out how connected to God when somebody looks at you and rolls their eyes at you. It, it's a test of whether we're built on the rock or whether we're built on the sand. Watch this. He goes on to verse 26, and he does a comparison here. And he says, watch this. Because what happens is we got to get built on the rock. Somebody say the rock. The rock. The rock. The rock. When they built the Empire State Building, they, they, they kept digging. They kept digging. The, the foreman, he said, let's keep digging. And one of the things he would say is, have we hit the bottom yet? Have we hit a rock yet? No. Nope. Keep digging. Keep digging. Keep digging. Keep digging. Because what we're about to build on this foundation, it's got to be on the rock. For when the storms came, it, it'll still hold. Yeah. Okay? And God, watch this now. Many of you, he's wanting to take you to places in him that you have never been before, but he's got to make sure that you're on the rock because he don't want you to be a Pluto Christian that when the storm came, you get gone. Yeah. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon what? Anybody in here ever built a sandcastle? You went to the beach and you built you a sandcastle and you may have went to the car and came back and that sandcastle wasn't standing no more. You were disappointed, you were crying, you were doing all that, but guess what? You built it on sand. You built it on sand. Somebody say, don't build it on sand. Don't build it on sand. Don't build it on sand. Then we'll finish this out in 27. It says, watch this. It says, and the rain, watch this, it's the same storm. The rain descended. This is the same storm that the person who built their house on the rock faced. The rain descended, the flood came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was that the fall. You see that? Great was the fall. Amen. So somebody say foundation matters. Foundation matters. The third thing that I want you to know about Noah is Noah trusted God for his provision and protection before, during, and after the flood, all right? Without a word from God, you have no basis for faith. Romans 10 and 17, faith coming by hearing, hearing and hearing coming what? The by the word of God, all right? Noah trusted him before the storm, during the storm, and after the storm. The first thing God did is he brought him into the ark. Genesis 7 and 1 says, then the Lord said, notice he's talking to Noah, then the Lord said, come into the ark, 
you and your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Let me ask you a question, man. Can you say that about your house? Can, can you say that, Lord, I stand righteous before you, and when you invite me into greater places of blessing, I can stand in the right standing with you, God, because I haven't done everything right, but one thing I do know is that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. One thing I do know, Lord, is I have repented of all my sins, Lord God, and I've laid them down with you, God, and I can walk like you want me to walk in the earth. He brought them into the ark. The second thing he did is he shut them in. Wherever God brings you is his responsibility to protect you. Amen. Wherever God brings you is his responsibility to protect you. Amen. When you get promoted on your job and there are other people that were in the same position as you were and they're hating on you because you got promoted, understand that you are being protected by God because promotion comes from him. Right. Amen. Don't, 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 don't get caught up in that because <laughs> if you get caught up in that, you'll miss what God is trying to do. But he shut him in. The Bible says in verse 16 of chapter 7, so those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. See, the Lord shut him in. Y'all know, the, it, it, Noah didn't have to go out and get all them animals. God sent the animals to Noah. God, all he had to do was prepare the, the, the atmosphere, and, and God... Uh, when it was time, when the rain started to, to come down a little bit, it was God who, who talked to, to, to Mr. Giraffe. And Mr. Giraffe looked over at Mrs. Giraffe and said, oh, I guess it's time. I'll be and they, they had more sense than the people did. And they all got in the boat. The third thing is, is God remembered him. I'm talking about number three, Noah trusted God in his provision and protection. We got to begin to trust God. God, God remembered him. Now, 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 you need to understand, what do you mean? God forgot Noah? No. That, that's an anthropomorphism, and it's a non-literal picture of God in human terms we can understand. All right? That's, that's what that is. That's, that's, it's not that God forgot Noah. Come on, God is omniscient. Amen. God is omnipotent. You know, God, God doesn't forget anybody. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. But, but, but to get us to understand it, he's saying in verse, eight, verse 1 in chapter 8, then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made the wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. How many of you know that God will never forget you? God will never forget you. God, God will remember you. Amen. Many of us have disqualified ourselves. We say, man, I've done too much. I've done too much wrong. God has forgotten all about me. No, God, he knows you. He was created in his likeness and his image. And you have not gone too far while there's still life in your body from God's reach. Amen. God will find you. Somebody said, well, you don't even know what I did last night. But I said, guess what? God is right there waiting on you. Mm -hmm. He's right there with his arms wide open saying, when you come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to show you rest like you never had before. Anybody ever experienced the rest of God? I'm talking about the true rest that brings peace, that surpasses all understanding. I'm talking about the true rest that regardless of what's going on in your life, you can be at peace knowing that God has got this in his hands and I can celebrate even while going through the situation and the circumstance. Anybody know that peace of God? God, I don't know how it's going to work out, but what I'm going to do is keep my mind stayed on you, God. And you're going to keep me in perfect peace. I don't know where it's going to come from, but God, you're my provider. And God, I'm going to let go so that you can begin to intercede and do what you need to do to bring about radical change in my life. Yeah. We carry too much. Yeah. And God says, I never created you to carry yeah. all of that. All right, all right. You go and get second, Amen. third, and fourth job. Say, wait a minute. I ain't, you wait a minute. Get, get, your, get your stuff straight. I never told you to go get three or four jobs to provide for yourself. Yeah. He says, you got too much money at the end of the money. Your money is running out before the month even runs up. He says, let's address that problem and stop wearing yourself out. Put me first. Somebody say, put him first. Put him first. Put him first. And when you put him first, number four is, he, he'll bring you out. And that's what he did to Noah. He brought him out. He, he'll bring you out. Somebody right now, you're in the storm. You're riding the waves and you don't know how much longer you can go. God, this spouse is getting on my nerves. I don't know how much longer I can take it. 
God, this job, I just can't, I can't do it anymore. God, if, once, if somebody say one more thing to me, God, I'm liable to snap. <laughs> Anybody ever been on your job before? But you got to understand that, man, if you're in the Ark of the Covenant, if you're, if you're in Jesus Christ and Christ is in you, he's going to ensure that you come through. He that began a good work in you, he'll make sure that he completes it until the end. Why? For his glory. It's all about his glory on the Lord. Verse 8 of, 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 of chapter 8, verse 15 and 18, he brought him out. Watch this. He says it again in verse 15. Then God spoke to Noah. Y'all see that? Yeah. We see it's, a, it's a foundational thing. God spoke to Noah. God spoke to Noah. Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. I love that. Amen. They, they were able to participate in the blessing of Noah because they were obedient to what Noah was preaching. Watch this. Bring out with you every living kind thing of all the flesh that is with you, birds and cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wives and his, his sons' wives with him. Do y'all see that? God is, he's, he's, he's starting over with Noah. He says, you know what? I've only found one faithful person in the earth. In fact, I'm a group of up. It's going to be eight of them. And eight <laughs> is the number of new beginning. I'm going to start a new thing. Adam, I know I told you to be fruitful and multiply. But man, that, 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 that lineage that came after you was so hellish, I had to destroy them. Now I'm giving this command to this righteous man, Noah. I want y'all to replenish the earth. Man, look at the responsibility he had. He had the responsibility to build an ark in the face of people who were laughing at him, who were ridiculing him. He had the responsibility to take care of those animals and feed his family uh, in all those days that it rained. And, 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 and now he's got the responsibility to replenish the earth. God has laid a lot on him, but he can do it through God. The last thing is this. The last two things is this. Number four is Noah was a worshiper. Noah was a worshiper. Noah was a worshiper. He wasn't a finicky worshiper either. He, he, he was worshiping God out of the gratitude of his heart. Verse 20 of chapter 8 says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord, watch this, smell a smoothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living creature, eat thing, as I have done, while the earth remains seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Noah was a worshiper. When he got to the place, watch this now, he gave God his best. He didn't give God leftovers. He said, wait a minute, you just delivered me and my whole family from your wrath? I'm going to give you my best. I believe, watch this now. Many of us don't worship the way we supposed to worship because we don't understand what God has done for us. We don't understand fully the sacrifice that was made for our lives. That's why the Bible tells us, Paul says, you need to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. God don't want a dead sacrifice. We used to grow up in the church and we used to say, man, when I get old like Deacon Jackson, I'm going to serve like he served. Well, what you going to do between the ages of 20 and, and, and 70? live like a heaven? And that was our mindset, man. We were set on that. We said, man, I love the way they pray. We're going to pray like that when we get seven. <laughs> That's all God is worth. Live like you want to live for, for, for your life. And then when you get to a point where you need him, you know, now, now you want to serve. Wait a minute. No, you got to serve him while there's breath still in your body. Man, man when you sold out to God, you, don't, you, you, you began to look for things to do for him. You don't have to ask anybody, no, what do I need to do for the Lord? And you begin to get involved because you understand there was a great sacrifice made for you. Noah sacrificed the best. He risked extinction. He said, you know what? I know I only got a few of these, but God going to give you all of them because I recognize that I wouldn't have it unless it was for you. Amen. I ain't got time to go into a, uh, a giving message, but let me just say this. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this quickly. And, 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 and he, gave an, he gave an offering. And, 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 and you should, uh, out of the kindness of your heart, the Bible says, don't give grudgingly or of necessity. 
All right? Don't, don't give grudgingly. So in other words, if I'm giving, whether it be a tenth or whether it be a hundred percent, if I'm giving with the wrong attitude, God is just saying, say, go ahead and keep that. <laughs> he said, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and just, just keep that, you know, because you're not giving with, with the right heart. Amen? You, but, 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 man, when you begin to understand the sacrifice that God has made for you, you give to him, not only monetarily, but you give him your energy, you give him your zeal, not only on Sundays, but all throughout the week, you go hard for God. You go hard for God on your job, and you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for you know it is the power to save. You know it has power in it. And that's what Noah did. He was a worshiper. He worshiped God. The last thing Noah was, he was a covenant carrier. He was a covenant carrier. He was a covenant carrier. He carried the covenant of God in his heart. And he lived a lifestyle that was worthy for God to be praised. Verse 8 and 11 of chapter 9 of Genesis. It says, then God, here it is, spoke to Noah. Watch this now. And to his sons with him saying, and as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the, the birds, the cattle, and the beasts, and the earth with or with you, of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. God is making a covenant. He's establishing a covenant with Noah. He says, thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy <coughs> the earth. And you keep reading verses 12 through 15, uh, as Elder Carson pointed out, it was the bow that he gave us as a reminder of that. Every time it rains and you see a rainbow, it's a reminder of Genesis chapters, chapter 9. If you can go to Genesis chapter 9, you can read that when you see a rainbow. Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 through 15, that's the Noahic covenant. God made a covenant with Noah that I will no longer, I will, I will not ever destroy the earth again the way I did it. That's encouraging to us. Now, people have taken the rainbow and turned it into something that it never should have been. And when you see that, you need to be disgusted. It's never intended to be that. It's a reminder of the grace of God and how he will never pour out like he did before. Now, now we, we understand the vengeance of God, but but man, it's, 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 there's grace in there. God had grace in the midst of vengeance because he spared Noah and his family. He put them in an ark and protected them. He protected them. And, you know, just as Noah was used of God during that time, Jesus came to rescue us Amen. by giving his life. He, he rescued us. We, we, we stand on the judgment for rebellion against God. Our rebellion, our sin has put us in darkness. We cannot see ourselves for who we are in reality, and we especially cannot see God for who he really is. And we cannot find our own way without help of the rescuer. You need to understand that we are doomed without Jesus. We, we, we have no hope without Jesus. But, but, but here's the astonishing mystery of God's grace and love towards us. That, 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 that even in our rebellious state, he still loved us. The, the Bible tells us, watch this, it says, while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love towards us. While we were yet sinning, God demonstrated his love towards us. Christ died for us. He died for us. We, we've, been, we've been reconciled. Somebody say reconciled. reconciled. We've been purchased back. God is, God is, here is the amazing thing, people. And when we, when we study and read uh, the passages of, of the old economy. It's a reminder that, man, God's grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He could have taken out Noah and his family, but he says, no. He had, watch this, he had us in mind. Y'all know if, if all that was wiped out? <laughs> you know, I mean, think about it. We, we, we got to connect back to the grace of God because we're here by virtue of what people before us did in order to contend for the faith. Amen. They contended for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And we have to do the same thing. We got a generation of children coming up behind us. What are they going to see? What are we showing them? Not, 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 not based on what we're saying, but I'm talking about what we're doing. Amen. 
Yeah, you come to church every Sunday, as you should. But what about when we step right out the park? I pray that nobody does this today. But some people, man, when they step right out the parking lot and right in the parking lot, if somebody pull out in front of them, they done already just erase the message and said, oh, forget all that. They were saying, I'm just going to be me. <laughs> Maybe you just need to, be, you need to come up for prayer or something. <laughs> we need to talk to you as a result of that. But, but Noah had the heart of God. And what I want you to understand is when you have the heart of God, man, God begins to he begins, to, he begins to speak to you. You begin to walk with him. And he'll begin to order the steps of your life. He'll begin to say, no, no, no. Go, go this way. No, 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 no. Don't, don't connect with them. It's not time to connect with them yet. I got to get some stuff out of you first before you can connect with them. Because right now in that state, you're vulnerable and you'll fall into a pattern where you'll get further and further away from me. He'll, 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 he'll send some of us on mission trips that we never thought we would go on. God, I don't know how I'm gonna go on that mission. He says, you know what, I've already provided. All I'm looking for is a vessel to go. Are you willing to go? And there's somebody over there waiting on you, and I've arranged it in such a fashion that you're the one that's going to lead them to me. But God, I'm too busy. I got this going on, I got that. God said, wait a minute, I didn't say, did you hear what I said? I, I need you to be obedient to me. True stories told of a missionary who went to a third world country, and, and God sent him over there to be a mouthpiece to the people who could not speak English. And he went over there, he learned the language, and he began to minister to them, and nobody was coming to Christ, and finally shook his fist at God and said, get me out of here. I don't even know why you brought me here. This is a waste of my time. This is a waste of my money. And God says, I didn't bring you over there for them. I really brought them oh, you over there for you. Because see how you act. <laughs> and that man was convicted. He repented. And he went and served that nation of people, and 90% of the people in the colony came to Christ. Somebody says, it's not about you. God is asking you to do something totally out of, out of line in terms of your abilities. Understand, man, that you're connected to an awesome God. Amen. Our God owns the cattle on a thousand hill, and I like to say he even owned the hill itself. Amen. So if he gives you an assignment, Understand that he's going to provide provision for the vision. But I don't, but, but what, I ain't talking about what happened two years, four years ago. I'm talking about what's happening right now. Can God, here's the question, can God use you right now? Are you walking with God in such a fashion that if he said, I need you? Are you walking with God in such a way where, where he said, I, I Are you walking in a fashion with God where you know you've been in the wrong, but he says, just go back. Just go back and listen to me this time. Don't lean to your own understanding. Acknowledge me in all of thy ways, and I, I, I will direct your path. See, God is a God who doesn't mind us taking the test over again until we get it. We'll take that test over and over again. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And he's like, man, this looks familiar. And the reason it looked familiar is because we failed it. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I want you to go out and give him your best. Go out and, and just like Noah did, man, he gave him his best. He said, Lord, I don't care who it separates me from or how I look doing it. I'm going hard for you. You get tired of trying to look cute for people who don't even know nothing about you. <laughs> You get tired of that. I'm done with that. I'm not saying you should look cute. But don't be looking cute for other people. You better be looking cute for God. <laughs> Go ahead and give him praise in Jesus. Praise God. Father, we love you today. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory. We thank you for the life of these dear people who live before us. Father, thank you for your grace, your saving grace even in the midst of your wrath. 